Hello everyone, I am Ardhendu De. You are watching Edis English Literature. Herein I am going to carry out a detailed analysis of George Bernard Shaw as a dramatic artist. We will make our discussion alive by analyzing his mastery, his mastery of stagecraft, his elaborate and detailed propaganda, and obviously the stage directions, realistic and other key elements that he infused in a new way, in a new lease of dramatic jar in English theater. George Bernard Shaw has a definite message to deliver. He has a philosophy to propound. He says, I am no ordinary playwright. I am a specialist in immoral and heretical place. My reputation was gained by my persistent struggle to force the public to reconsider its morals. I write plays with the deliberate object of converting the nation to my opinion on sexual and social matters. I am no other incentive to write plays, as I am not dependent on it for my livelihood. On account of this, he is generally regarded as a philosopher a propagandist, a debater, a social reformer, and not as a dramatist and a man of theatre. So he is literally a satirist and iconoclast, but no playwright. This is the view of many, but nothing is further from the truth. So he is essentially a man of the theatre and his natural affinity for the stage is as strong in him as his evangelical tendency. It is altogether wrong to think that he is merely an advanced propagandist who has chosen the theatre as a ready and insidious instrument for the furthering of his ideas. I must say that Saw is essentially a man of the theatre. He is a consummate dramatic artist. He has shown greater knowledge of the stage and its technique than any of the contemporaries. He has taken greater pains to make his plays really interesting and appealing to the audience. The dramaturgic skill of his plays is no less essential than their philosophical ideas. Essentially a playwright, uh, his plays are instinct with the life of the theatre. Now as a, as a literary artist, as a dramatist, as you all know that Apart from William Shakespeare, the other English artist who comes to our mind is Shaw and understanding Shaw is a must for us. George Bernard Shaw had a wonderful mystery of stagecraft. His skill in the art of construction of plays was consummate. But he was no innovator and did not invent any new technique. He in fact adopted the traditional methods whenever he found them suitable for his purpose. He borrowed freely from Ibsen, who introduced some new methods in his dramas. Thus he made a harmonious synthesis of the old and the new methods to evolve one to suit the need of his place. In imitation of Ibsen, he discarded asides and soliloquies. He directed his effort to an easy and natural concatenation of events as was not seen in the plays of his time. As a matter of fact, he used the technique of Euripides. He revived the idiosyncratic differentiation of character seen in Shakespeare. He provided the actors and actresses with enormous effective parts such as had not been created by a British writer for nearly 300 years. He restored the long rhetorical speeches which are an important feature of primitive dramaturgy. So the stagecraft of Saw is ingenious one, applied one and it is even not without denying the fundamental principles of dramatology.
the special features of saw's dramatic techniques are his preface his elaborate stage directions his rejections of the artificial limitations of the classical unities and lack of accents and conflict in his place now i will carry out a discussion one by one now first of all preface now so was hardly dependent on the stage for the publicity of his place he was fully conscious of the blindness of the commercial theaters of london he knew that the theatrical managers would be shy to produce his place for commercial reasons since his place would not really attract a large audience he thus decided to make the appeal of his plays wider by first committing them to print so he wrote the plays primarily more for reading than for acting so with this end so with this view he wrote a preface for each of his plays to introduce it to the reading public he elaborately makes a statement of his philosophy of his ideology of his ethics of his understanding and he delivers it to the reading public with the same end in view where intended to explain the purpose of his plays and the message that were meant to convey and these prefaces in fact gave uh, him an opportunity to argue at length certain matters which were of interest to him so by means of elaborate stage directions he aimed at creating the atmosphere of the stage in the study of his plays they combine the function of the novel and the dramas so these prefaces create the necessary atmosphere a commentary is there commentary upon stage settings and even some of the characters that are need to be interpreted in right manners has been lucidly has been lucidly explained in the previous part so when we are reading saw we must go through prefaces to get into that play because it tells many things of his dramatic ideologies in matter of conforming the rules of classical unities unity of time place and action so has its own perspective the english playwrights in fact immediately before saw were in favor of keeping up the three classical unities of time place and action in their plays under the influence of the french dramatist whom they imitated you know so rejected those artificial restrictions of right and followed shakespeare in violating the classical unities in the in the, in the construction of his plays because he is more with the principles of designing the drama in its full unit and time place and action do not conform with the basics of delivering the point so he rejects them or rather he makes some deliberate changes to make a suitable end of his dramaturgic presentation saw's plays are marked by an absence of conflict which is an essential element in dramatic action this is regarded as a serious drawback of saw's dramatic art it is a fact that conflict in the physical sense is really absent in saw's plays but you know conflict is the soul of drama as that is been that has been told by aristotle in his poetics but saw's plays are not altogether without the conflict there is always a mental conflict present in the plays there is class of competing ideas opposing standards of human values in them if conflict in drama necessarily implies a class 
involving either violent physical action or intense emotional disturbances, then conflict in that sense is often lacking in Sevian drama. It is however by design lacking, but its place is taken by mental action. Uh, and so Saul's play is more exciting because the conflict inherent in the conscience, in the action of mind. Conflict of passion so substitutes the conflict of thought and belief, or rather he brings moral passions to the stage to break the long monopoly of physical and sensual passions. So his is the drama of thinking character, you know, thinking protagonist, thinking personage. The true revolution which must be ascribed to him is the transference of conflict of modern drama from the physical to the mental level. And the greatest critic A.C. Ward has commented on the absence of conflict in Saw's play and he makes the point that Saw's play without the physical conflict makes a greater resources of mental conflict and that is the beauty of his essence. Saw's play are lacking in action. They are in fact no more than dramatic dialogues. The characters in his plays may only stand or sit and discuss and argue things. They talk together and hold debates. They do things little. This is of course is true, but the lack of action in his plays has been amply compromised and compensated by the flow of ideas, by the dazzling bouts of intellectual swordmanship and also by amusing wit. There is a profusion of these elements in his plays to keep the attention of the audience sufficiently engrossed that they never feel for the absence of action. The fact is that Saw so is not very much interested in action. He reduces action to make room for discussions. And his discussion is essential because all the conflict inherent is happening in the mind. So he does not devise action that develops naturally from the characters or is a logical outcome of the situation. Sometimes he introduces violent and arbitrary action to keep the play moving. Such action does not spring naturally from the development of the plot or the characters. It is all an eye-catchy attractive scene to pull the audience. Grandiloquent settings is sometimes preferred only to show a backdrop to attract the audience. So it bears little relation to the general structure of the play. It is often arbitrary and convulsive and does not spring uh, naturally or resolve itself into the organic structure of the play. So actions that we are finding out in Saw's play is not physical and missing altogether, but the actions is flowing underneath in the subconscious mind in through of discussions and words and that is the new way of presenting Sabian drums. Plot The plot of a Sabian drama is very simple. It is made up very meager elements and is altogether free from multiplicity of action. There is no complexity of events. It is usually divided into three acts, but occasionally into four acts. There is no subdivisions in, in, into the scenes. So his plot is for not for physical action, but for the worldly discussion to be completed. Unless the discussion is completed, the physical action rolls on and the plot continues. It is generally believed that Saw's characterization is defective. 
the characters of Saul's dramas are shadowy and realities. They are not individuals but mere types. They are not characters by automations. We starting the characters are merely mouthpiece for his own ideas and they preach openly or by implication for his own gospel. The view regarding the character of source dramas is only partially true. It is true that human characters are missing in source play. They are like mini caricature of ideas. But the larger number of his personages are instinct only, with the life of intelligence and are but a mouthpiece of the author. It is equally true that everything that a character says comes out of his creator's mind. But it is not true that all his characters are not individual people with authentic personalities. But the authentic genuine personalities are lighter than the heavier blow of Saw's ideas. Saw's characters are not without variety and vividness. They have a peculiar quality which make them stay in the memory and enables them to pass into conversation. We cannot miss Rana, we cannot miss Blanchley, we cannot miss Sargius. So answer the man, even though it propounds an idea, the characters are alive. So principal characters are with more or less deliberation abstractions from humanity, but his minor characters are human beings drawn in the spirit of Shakespeare or Dickens, though they too serve as black ground to his ideas. So as women are distinctly unpleasant and practically unsexed women, their bodies are as dry and hard as their minds, even uh, where they run after men as in the case of the Annie in the Man and Superman, the persuade has as much sense appeal as a timetable. Whether such women ever existed or whether in creating them Ibsen convinced so, they ought to exist as a counter irritant to the romantic, sonning, novel reading female of our boyhood. In an open question, Saw's characters are excellent talkers. They are never dull and monotonous. They are various, versatile and vital. They live in a world of their own ideas and are quite at home there. So writes his plays in prose which is the language of reason and intellect and not in parts which is the language of emotion. He is one of the greatest masters of English prose with a masterly command over the English language. He writes natural grace, vivid dialogues. Simply his language smacks of gold intellectuality. It is free from emotional favor. It is sparkling with fun, wit and humor. It serves a practical and utilitarian purpose and used for reasoning. Argument and discussion. He is in fact a great stylist and his style is peculiarly his own. He yields it as an effective weapon to assert his point of view with conviction. So himself has said that his style is an instrument of assertion. I quote, he says, a true style is never achieved for its own sake. Effectiveness of assertion is the alpha and omega of style. He who has nothing to assert has no style and can have none. He who has something to assert will go as far in power of style as its momentousness and his conviction will carry him. George Bernard Shaw is a realist. He writes with a serious purpose. The reality of life is the most serious and exciting thing to him. 
he finds that life is real life is a harnessed but he has not limited the appearance of life he has explained to his audience the reality that lies at the core of things beneath their deceptive appearances his realism is absolutely free from any touch of romance and sentimentalism he has based his dramas on what he regards as genuinely scientific natural history so his dramas are full of ideas and those ideas are realistic ideas and those realism is the practical realism that leads one into surviving natural instinct as scientific history that's the scientific history and as scientific history is free from romance his dramas are too entirely free from it so writes with a purpose he has made his plays vehicles of his ideas his plays are about something that matters i must say that souls plays with the stamp with the style with the peculiar and authentic vibration of some ideological realism even it sometimes shows that it is shows morals it is shows politics it is shows philosophy but in fact that philosophy if i possess is like that of a strong dramatic gift that i gain from so so the gift that saw delivers to us is his dramatic geniusness and it will be ever alive on human communities and people throughout the world is strictly reading this philosophical works if i not say dramatic works of so and they are themselves educating them entertaining them startling them with that top a greater knowledge by which not only the pleasure but also a way to life a life force is there and that is the savior life force that lead us a beautiful way into the world of living i think with this initial lecture on sauce as a dramatist you will find plenty of other theories or plenty of other expressions of his dramatic works that will be binding one in your future course of studies this initial lecture might help you in this regard so like share comment and obviously subscribe to my channel and if you have any question just pop up here i will try my best to answer those queries thank you bye bye